Now you're in New York. These streets will make you feel brand new. Big lights will inspire you. Let's hear it for New York, New York, New York. Yeah. What is up, everybody? I, this is your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva. And I'm trying to get on my book club book recommendation kick for the summer. So it's been a minute. As a matter of fact, the last review I did was The Lies of a Real Housewife. What was her name? Stan. I just remember her last name, Stan. Anyways, thank you guys for watching that video. It's old and a lot of my followers have been watching it. But I've got a new book for you. Let me see how can I angle this so everybody can see it. But anyways, this is called The Wife Between Us, a novel. A psychological thriller suspense uh, it's written by Greer Hendricks and Sarah I think this is Pat Cannon and I know that you guys gathered from me attempting to sing at the top of this video it's just something I like to do if you're new here that's just stuff Diva does but this story takes place in New York Manhattan specifically and there was mention of the Upper East Side and yeah but let's get into it let me tell y'all, child. Let me just. Now, I bet you're wondering, is this wine I'm drinking out of this stemless wine glass? Could be, could be not. Let's ask Nelly. Let's ask Vanessa. Let's ask Emma. And what's the other woman named Karen? So this book, I could not put down. I finished it in three days. I fell asleep a couple of nights reading it because I so wanted to know, okay, what is going on? Where are the mind games? Why is she so obsessed? Because like, honestly, the theme song of this book could have been, why are you so obsessed with me? Hit it, Mariah. Yeah, it really could have been because you had no idea what was coming, who was doing what, who was married, who the ex-wife is, what's up with Richard and his sister, what's up with Richard and this Nelly name. Because, like, I started reading part one, and we come upon a character in the book who's watching someone. Now, the watcher, we assume, is like an ex-wife. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You'll have to read the book because I really don't want to give a lot of a lot of way about this book, but what I will tell you, the theme is this, and there are men out there that will prey on the weaknesses of women. They will strip you of everything that you have because they come off as Prince Charming, as being so loving and caring and wanting to take care of you, but then they isolate you. Some of us marry for love. Some of us marry for money and security and protection. And sometimes we marry for all of those things. Sometimes we get the package deal. You get a man that loves you, adores you, takes care of you, can provide for you. You don't have to work. He puts you in, his, in your own little castle. But then at the same time, he's kind of manipulative, but you so far off in it until you can't even understand what the heck is going on until one day you wake up and realize I'm living with a possible psycho. I don't know. It happens. This book teaches you to become aware of the people you choose to partner with. And in some ways, it teaches you a cautionary tale about sharing too much up front. And sometimes maybe some secrets should be kept buried. And they'll manipulate you. The main, I guess I could call him the antagonist, is Richard. He's the husband. And then there is Nellie. There are other women in there, but you have to figure out who is the victim, who is the wife, ex-wife, because you get confused. It, it can be confusing. As a matter of fact, when I completed the book, I had to go back and read the prologue. Is it prologue? Epilogue. Honestly, if you think about Richard, Richard also could be viewed as like the devil. Beautiful to look at, gorgeous man, whole package, but there's something that lies beneath that just makes you second guess yourself, but then at the same time, you just be like, but he love her, right? He take care of her, right? 
Oh, the devil used to be an angel. You all need to get down to your local bookstore, your library, your Kindle, because I have mine on my Kindle Fire. The Wife Between Us. It's like, who's the wife between us? Like, who is it? And then I love how there is this complete setup. I think also an alternate name for this book could have been The Replacement Wife as well. But people pretend well. Uh, there are men out there that manipulate our minds and sometimes will literally attempt to drive you crazy to cripple you to become solely dependent on them because they had a messed up childhood. Let's just say if you get with a man who cannot disclose to you fully what happened in their childhood, you might want to run the other way and be like, whoa, Nelly, I'm not down for this. Okay. But it's very suspenseful, very well written. Local libraries do have it. My friend found it in Orange County on digital at the library. So you might be able to get it that way and check it out because you can finish it. Honestly, if you have a good 24 hours or just a day, you could finish this book. But it's very intense and you're just like, no, everyone noticed what was going on. But it's just like you have these friends. It's like, well, you know, she's really happy and she's so caught up with this dude. I'm not going to say anything. And sometimes that is the best policy. Now, if they come to you, yes, yeah, say something. Let's see, what are some highlights in this book? Because I highlighted a couple of things that we can talk about real quick. So sometimes there are people out there that keep secrets. So at one point of the book, one of the characters has a dark secret. And she says, in order to deflect and not really reflect about your background, <laughs> Tell colorful, drawn-out stories that deflect attention from the fact that you aren't actually sharing anything. Avoid specific facts. Uh, avoid specifics that will separate you from the crowd. Be vague about the year you graduated. Lie, but only when completely necessary. So you kind of are lying because it's lies by omissions, but unless someone goes digging, they're not going to find out anything about you. So one of the characters in the book did have some secrets that... Honestly, they were innocent. It happened. Take responsibility for it, but don't continue to beat yourself up. Plus, don't share too much about it because it can be used as leverage. We all layer them over our remembrances, the filters through which we want to see our lives. And that also could be like the theme of the book is that one of the things I say uh, is that people pretend well. And Richard, he was very charming. Wall Street hedge fund manager got it going on, looked good on paper, and made you think that he was a good catch, but he had issues. Friends should tell you, I know you love him, but please stay true to yourself. And then this is what I was talking about when people, when guys try to make you look bad, making me look bad in public, having other people view me as unstable and worse, causing me to question myself. So those are some of the things that happened. But we have a hero in the book we have a protagonist but with Richard the husband I just was like oh lord I probably would have just I don't know I would have gone upside his head all right one more lesson this book teaches you do background checks on whomever you get with find out the ex-wife name if you got ex-wives that's all I'm gonna say because lesson learned in real life always do a background check on all parties connected but either way um, y'all go check out this book like I said I don't want to give away too much but I hope I've given you enough to make you be like shit I need to get down to Barnes and Noble or to half price books or I'm trying to think where else and whatever local bookstore you can get to but I really enjoyed this book. After I finished, I was like, oh, oh my God, your past does have a way of catching up with you. It really does make you think about relationships. And um, I used to have a guy that I dated that was manipulative like that. Like he would try to tell me that I had said things that I hadn't said and done things. I said, shit, did this, did the authors write this book kind of about me and my, my crazy ex-boyfriend? Tried to really make me think I was crazy, but I was like, dude, let me screenshot you these text messages because I keep all of my text messages <laughs> because I like to have a record. I'm kind of like that. I like to have a record of things so I can disprove when you try to catch me in a lie when you the one lying. Okay, 
buyer beware because people do pretend well and people will prey upon your secrets, which is therefore your weaknesses. So uh, go out and get this book, The Wife Between Us. And you won't be surprised who the other wife is in between. But comment down below. Let me know if you've ever read this book. Let me know what you are reading. I, I'm big on self-help books, but I like good fiction. And when it's good fiction, it's usually a thriller, a mystery, a murder mystery. Uh, like I read a lot of Harlan Coben, John Grisham, but Brad Meltzer I'll read. And then like... If you, again, if you like books like Gone Girl, Jillian Flynn novels, I should say, which I'm so disappointed in her. She has not written a book. She didn't have Gone Girl and Charlie Theron and took the last two books. Actually, the best one in a movie is coming out for it called Sharp Objects. Yeah, Gone Girl was good, but Sharp Objects, that book was so good. I was like, when is she going to put out another one? Another somebody I read is Anne Frazier. And then it's a new one that I'm checking out, Dana Delion. Um, she writes a lot about this girl named Shay Archer in a, in a series book. I think I'm on book five now. Um, I think there's six so far in the series, but she writes a lot of series, Louisiana based, even though she lives in Dallas. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to share some of the things that I read. I do read African American fiction. Um, I love Eric Jerome Dickey. Pearl Clage, of course, Terry McMillan. I haven't read her le her last book that she's written so far. I have a lot of books. Bookbub.com is someplace you can register and list all the books that you want to, you know, might be interested in getting a deal on. Chimamanda, I think that's it. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, I love her books too. Uh, Americana is one you're familiar with, but we knew her when Beyonce, well, those of us who had not heard of her learned of her through Beyonce Flawless, because that's the person you hear reading. We teach girls uh, to aspire to marriage, but we don't teach girls to aspire to. Yeah. Anyway, this video has gone on long enough, and I hope I didn't ramble. But again, comment down below. Let me know what books you're into, what you're reading. I don't have a next read picked. Because I have like five or six books, like I'm in the spirituality books right now. Like I have two books about prayer that I'm reading kind of simultaneously. Praying for your elephant and fervent, a woman's battle plan for serious, specific and strategic prayers by Priscilla Shire. And the praying for your elephant is Adam, this looks like Adam Statman. Anyways, really good authors. And then there's another book I'm reading called The Deepest Well, Overcoming Childhood Adversity. Um, so I, I just read a lot. And so my mind is always jumping. So I will shift a lot to different books. But this book held my attention. So if I were y'all, I would get into it. Hey, it's a long weekend. If you don't feel like getting out and hanging out, you can hang out by the pool, your backyard, your porch, your bed, wherever, and read this book, The Wife Between Us. Um, I've been Miss Sophia the Diva. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to this channel. As you know, YouTube has this wonderful thing where if you have under a thousand subscribers or you have less than 4,000 viewing hours in a 12 month period, they will take your monetization away. But below, I do have uh, monetization availability, which is my cash app. I also have PayPal, but I need to fix that where it's not like actually my whole name because, uh, you know, I'm still corporate. But thank you guys for joining. I have been Miss Sophia the Diva, and let's read about it.